Okay, hello everyone. Um, thanks for joining our webinar on how to compile up to 90% faster by combining Q with Incredibuild. During the session, if you have any questions, please submit them by uh, using the Q&A button at the top of the interface. Um, if you could please only use you to send your questions um, to allow us to answer them at the very end of this um, session. And you'll receive a copy of it delivered to your email account. I hope you enjoy, and I'll now hand over to our expert, Dory Exterman, CTO at Incredibuild. Over to you, Dory. Hello to you all, and thank you for joining us uh, this uh, webinar uh, on uh, how to uh, get much more productive and uh, you know, do everything much faster when using Incredibuild uh, with Qt and, in general, and Qt Creator specifically. <clears throat> so first of all, I think that uh, men, some of you may know, not know Incredibuild. So what is Incredibuild? Uh, Incredibuild is a distributing infrastructure, process distribution infrastructure, which uh, essentially allows uh, every machine to use all the idle CPU cycles of other machines in the network. Uh, so you usually start uh, your usual build or something like that would be with a single machine, but with Incredibuild, you could use a lot more machine and use all the aggregated cores of these machines. And the result would be that every machine can transform and become a supercomputer machine. So every machine that's part of the Incredibuild infrastructure can use all the ideal resources of all the other machine in the infrastructure. Uh, with Usually, uh, from uh, uh, experience with our customers, organizations have hundreds of cores that they are not using uh, every minute. So even if you have uh, machines that people are working on, uh, people from sales or development, uh, usually only a small portion of the machine is being used, the core, the CPU part of the machine. Incredibly is able to take over all these idle CPU cycles and, and, and allow every machine that's part of the network to uh, utilize them in order to accelerate heavy duty tasks uh, that you'd like to uh, run faster. Uh, when uh, we're speaking about uh, build times, tests, and other tasks that are part of the development processes, uh, there are many of them that take long time. Uh, if we're speaking about C++ compilations, Google tests, uh, integration API test, code analysis, things like that. And that's exactly where Incredibuild kicks in. Uh, with Incredibuild, the IT overhead uh, to set up this kind of infrastructure is, is actually quite minimal. The only thing you need to do is install Incredibuild on each machine you have in your network. And, and this is it, more or less. The only, every machine that's part of the network will be able to scale to hundreds of cores that you already own and pay for uh, in order to accelerate uh, time-consuming high-throughput executions. <clears throat> Incredibuild, in order to do that, Incredibuild employs a unique virtualization technology. Uh, Incredibuild uh, knows how to execute processes remotely in a secured sandbox and virtualize everything that the process needs in order to work properly on the remote machine. And we do that on demand. This means that the processes that Incredibuild will distribute to remote machines will run as if they are running on your local machine. So as a user, when I'm using Incredibuild, it's really as if I have 300, 400 cores on my local machine and 400 gigs of memory to my disposal. So if I have time-consuming tasks, and if we're speaking about Qt, it's usually compilations, then I can run them much faster uh, by having a lot of resources to do that. If we're speaking about Qt Creator, uh, we're speaking about compilations, but essentially Incredibuild is a generic infrastructure that allows you to distribute any kind of process. Uh, and one of the magic and the tricks that Incredibuild has is that you don't need to install uh, Qt Creator or your source file or any of your build tool chain on these remote machines. The only thing that you need to have on these remote machines is an Incredibuild agent uh, running there. And, and Incredibuild uh, actually will take it from here. Uh, running Incredibuild is super easy. Um, 
if you're using an ID, whether Qt Creator or, for example, if you're using the Qt libraries and you're building inside other IDs, the only thing you need to do is just use the IncrediBuild option uh, to build your code. And IncrediBuild will harness and distribute your processes to all the other machines that you have in your IncrediBuild infrastructure. If you are compiling from the command line, the only thing you need to do is wrap your original command line with an IncrediBuild command line, and that's it. That's all the integration you need to do in order for IncrediBuild to run your builds on hundreds of cores instead of only your local resources. We are doing all the rest, so you don't need to take care of transferring your files to copy your source code to the remote machines, to install anything besides IncrediBuild on the remote machine. We will copy back all the output of the compilation on the remote machine back to your local machine, to the original place where they should reside. Essentially, from your perspective as a user, it's really as though you have 400 cores or as many as you are able to use on your local machine. It doesn't, you don't need to uh, get interested in exactly how IncrediBuild does that. It is seamless. And that's the experience we would like our customers to have. Uh, really feel that they have hundreds of cores and they can use them to accelerate a variety of uh, high throughput execution. <clears throat> Let's take a look at uh, how does it look to build uh, the Qt SDK itself before we go into Qt Creator uh, on the Windows or Linux uh, uh, build machine. Uh, so when we build the Qt SDK, uh, we can run a variety of uh, uh, command to do that. We can use command line, we can use John, we can use, uh, we can transfer a project to Visual Studio. Uh, I'll show you something, uh, how the experience will look like. So IncrediBuild has uh, a build monitor uh, that shows you the builds when you run them. So essentially from Visual Studio, if I'm running a project with the Qt libraries or the Qt SDK, and here you'll see an execution of the Qt SDK, uh, what you can expect after you just build with the IncrediBuild uh, menu item is to see a build monitor. This is a, visual, a visualized uh, monitor that represents your build execution. You're probably used to seeing things like this. This is the regular output that, uh, that in, in this case, Visual Studio uh, is, is uh, taking out when building uh, Qt SDK. Uh, with IncrediBuild, you can also see this visual output. Uh, in, you, see, can, you can see this output in a, visual, in a visual way. So every bar here that you can see represents a task, a compilation task, or some other build task that is being executed by IncrediBuild. And every line here represents a core. So as you can see here, I have eight cores on my local machine. And when I'm running the Qt SDK, I can see all these compilation tasks being executed, linking, etc. And if I uh, scroll uh, to the right, I can see that building this uh, version of the Qt SDK took me something like 16 minutes uh, on my local machine. Another thing that I can see here is uh, the graphs here. So as you can see, uh, we have two graphs that are uh, interesting for us right now. Uh, there are many more that I can choose from uh, to see how uh, my resources are being allocated during the build execution. What's interesting here is to see that uh, uh, I'm actually running uh, a task and another task in the background, but I have in, in this specific uh, uh, time spot, I have 62 additional tasks that I could run in parallel if I had enough resources. Uh, here you can see that this number draw, uh, uh, goes down, but it again go up, and here we can run 400 tasks in parallel. Unfortunately for me, in this scenario, I have only eight cores, so I need to run all these tasks uh, in, in an eight parallel task, but in a sequential manner, eight by eight. So just once a task finished, the other one can uh, start, and I can see that the ready tasks are going down during the execution of my build. With IncrediBuild, if I have enough computers uh, and I run my build again, but uh, before that, let's, let's take a look at another thing, just before doing all this distribution. IncrediBuild can also, in some scenarios, uh, achieve a better uh, 
scheduling, build plan, than the regular tool you're using. So for example, here in Visual Studio, uh, you can see that uh, some of the tasks of the Qt SDK are running uh, in, a, in a sequential manner. If I zoom in here, I can see that these tasks are mock tasks that Visual Studio knows only to execute in a sequential manner. In CrediBuild, uh, especially for Visual Studio, but other tools as well, uh, has a better build plan and can parallel the build better even on my local eight core machine. So all these things that are running only in a single core and nothing can run in parallel to them, and I have a few of them here, Incredibly, if possible, we'll try and run as many of them in parallel as possible. So before going into the distribution, let's see how this same build execution uh, is running when we allow Incredibly to offer a better build plan. So as you can see here, uh, in this monitor, build monitor, we can see a, a better work plan that Incredibly offered for this uh, uh, execution of Qt. You actually don't need to do anything in order to achieve that if you are working with uh, one of the IDs uh, for which we offer a better build plan, that will be out of the box. So you can see that mock steps, if I uh, look for them, uh, are running in parallel with Incredibuild. And actually, even on my local machine, instead of running the build uh, in 16 minutes, you see here, I have also sequential tasks. Only by utilizing a better build plan, Incredibuild was able to reduce the build time to 11 minutes uh, from 16. So that's already a very meaningful performance boost, uh, just better, better utilizing my local cores. The incredible visualization has some other very cool features. Uh, for example, if I'm working with uh, Visual Studio or others, I can see all the projects, I can see the output per project, I can double click a task and go directly to the uh, output of this task, which makes it much more easy to uh, uh, find bottlenecks, to find errors, to navigate to errors. I can uh, see in a, in a colorful way uh, which task ended with a warning or error, etc. So that's that's very easy and very productive for developers and release automation manager to to inspect the build, and you can also save it and view history, etc., uh, etc. Et <clears throat> Another thing that I'll show you now is how does it look like when we employ our entire incredible uh, infrastructure. So in this scenario, you can see that uh, we, the, the number of lines that are here on the left side are much higher. So here you can see that I'm, I'm utilizing many, many cores. Actually, it's 100 cores across the network. And you can see that all these compilation tasks are being distributed seamlessly by Incredibuild to all these remote cores. Uh, you can see many different machines and many different operating systems taking part of this build. And as I said before, these machines don't have neither the source code, nor Visual Studio, or Qt, or the build tools, or anything else. Incredibuild virtualizes everything that's needed for the process to run remotely in a seamless manner. So as a user, I didn't need to do anything. Incredibuild simply distributed this compilation task to the remote machine and transferred back the uh, output that was generated by these tasks. So not only was I able to achieve this build instead of uh, 60 minutes was the original time to less than two minutes, uh, which is a drastic uh, performance boost. You can also see that my local machine here, the eight cores that I have on my local machine, most of the time are not being even used. So I'm in, I, I instruct an incredible here to try and distribute as much as possible all the tasks to the remote machines instead of running them locally. So not only do I get eight times or nine times better performance, uh, but I can also leave my machine as free as possible for me to continue and work instead of uh, you know, uh, suffocating it with executing build tasks. So in this, in this point in the, in the uh, build execution, you can see that uh, I have 138 active tasks. This means that I'm running 138 tasks in parallel across cores in the network. But you can also see that I have 781 ready tasks. This means that if I would add 780 additional cores to my incredible infrastructure, I would be able to get even better performance here and in all these other areas in which the ready task is much higher than the tasks that are actually being executed. 
So there is also uh, room for, opti for further optimiz optimizing the build performance in this scenario as well. Uh, when you're running uh, uh, the build with Incredibill, you, uh, you'll be able to uh, see the progress of the build in the visualization uh, on the fly during the build execution. Currently, I'm running a replay, and this is also something you'll be able to achieve. But essentially, you can see the build while it's progressing. You'll be able to see it as part of your compilation and navigate and inspect the build while it's, be, it's, it's progressing, see which projects are currently being built and the output that's being generated per project uh, and a lot of additional useful uh, information. Uh, and that's uh, very helpful when running a big uh, source code. Uh, you can see all these mocks here were executed in parallel by Incredibuild across all these cores that I have here on the right side, uh, making it very, very uh, efficient in terms of performance. <clears throat> Uh, so that's, that was the general execution of Incredibuild and what you can expect when building project, whether it's the Qt SDK or projects from other IDEs or build environment that involves a Qt library. Uh, now let's take a look at the, the Qt Creator IDE itself and see how and what's needed in order to uh, accelerate Qt Creator IDE projects with Incredibuild, with the Incredibuild plugin for that. Uh, we've, we're always trying to make the experience of working with Incredibuild as seamless and easy as possible. And we did the same thing for Qt Creator. The only thing you need to do in order to work with Incredibuild in Qt Creator IDE is first of all to install as a prerequisite to install Incredibuild on every machine you'd like to add to your Incredibuild pool. That's uh, next, next, next installation. We, we also have a silent install if you prefer. Uh, and it's very uh, easy setup. You don't need to do anything but installing the Incredible service, uh, uh, Incredible product, and then load an Incredible license to a centralized uh, uh, component. And then uh, you need to download the Incredible plugin for Qt Creator from our resource manager. The next thing, once you downloaded the Qt Creator pl Incredible plugin, the only thing you need to do is copy the plugin to the Qt Creator plugins directory and restart your Qt Creator and essentially that's it. You're ready to go. If you'd like to verify that your plugin is, the incredible plugin is enabled, uh, just navigate to help about plugins and you can see that your incredible is loaded in Qt Creator ID. <clears throat> We've made it very easy and very uh, seamless. And once you work with the incredible plugin as part of the Qt Creator IDE, you will feel that you are working in the same environment you are uh, used to work with. Uh, you'll have an incredible build step. You just need to add the incredible build step, and I'll show it to you in a minute in a live demo. Demo, and uh, once you add the build step, incredible will automatically take your original uh, make step commands. Uh, that you probably already have for the project for which you are uh, adding the incredible build step and will copy all the configuration of your existing uh, build command to the incredible command, uh, making it available for you to run without any further configuration. Once you do that, you just need to rebuild your code uh, with Qt Creator as you normally do, and incredible will take hold of this process and will do its magic uh, to make it much faster. Um, of course, the, uh, you can still use the uh, Qt Creator output and information bar, and you'll also have the Incredible Monitor that I just showed. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the Qt Creator IDE and see how, how it's being done. So <clears throat> here I have a, a simple project. Uh, inside already loaded inside the Qt Creator ID, and I have some build step uh, already uh, working for this project. And now, uh, after I copied the, plug, the Incredible plugin and started Qt Creator, Incredible is available for me. When I'd like to replace my original make command with Incredible in order to run my uh, uh, project much faster, the only thing I need to do is go to add build step and add one of the incredible build steps. Here I'm doing a demo on a Windows machine, 
So I'll add incredible for Windows. As you can see, the, the minute I added this build step, my original make command was disabled. So the next time I'm going to rebuild my code, uh, it will use the incredible build command instead of the original build command. Of course, I can enable it uh, uh, soon after. And in fact, let's do that and see how it, how it looks before we start. Uh, in the background, I'll just rebuild using my uh, regular configuration for Qt. Uh, and, and then we'll continue with uh, doing the same thing with Incredibuild. So uh, I can see here, one second, let me just minimize that. Okay. And uh, I can see in the Qt creator that things are running properly. Uh, and uh, the compilation passed. And it took uh, uh, something like 18 seconds to run it before it took 33 seconds. So that probably some kind of caching that was already here. Uh, and now, uh, and that's the regular output. Now when I'm adding incredible again, the original make command is disabled and you can see the incredible step here. Uh, we are using uh, the make command as a wrapper for the jump uh, command line. And actually we are ready to go. The only thing I needed to do is to add the incredible build step. We copied all the configurations from the original command and we are ready to run. Uh, once I did that, the only thing I need to do is just rebuild the game and incredible will kick in. As you can see, once incredible kicks in, we automatically open the incredible monitor and now instead of just seeing the textual output of my uh, Qt creator uh, IDE, I can also use the incredible build visualization in order to inspect what's running. I can, as I said before, jump to the output directly by double clicking a task. I can see <coughs> the build commands that are being executed. And you can see here that uh, not, I'm not only using my eight uh, local cores, for running the build, but I'm also using a variety of other machines that I, can, I currently have in my Incredibuild uh, uh, infrastructure. And the build time, uh, uh, again, uh, in a large project will be much, much faster uh, as long as you have a large enough project to run a lot of tasks in parallel. So when we are looking at uh, this build monitor, we can see a few things. We can see that we have green tasks, which means that this task is successful and is also distributable. So it can be distributed to remote machines. And we can see a blue task that are also successful, but this, when they are blue, it means that Incredibuild will only run them locally. In your Incredibuild uh, uh, plugin for Qt, you can uh, specify a variety of additional uh, uh, flags and configuration options that we have for Incredibuild. One of them, for example, is the ability to extend Incredibuild uh, to, to, to distribute and accelerate additional processes. By default, Incredibuild will only distribute the Qt compilation tasks. But in this scenario, when I'm reviewing my build monitor, I see that I have uh, some other tasks besides the compilation task. I have mock steps, I have RC steps, and maybe I'd like to distribute them on this, this task as well. So Incredibuild has a, an XML profile, which is a, a very straightforward file that allows me to uh, specify which additional uh, processes I'd like Incredibuild to execute remotely when they are executed by Qt Creator. So in this profile, I instructed Qt to all to instructed Incredible to also distribute my mock steps and the RCC steps that we've seen in the monitor. And I hope to achieve better performance or better utilization of my course than I was able to do before. So I'll go here to the profile XML and I'll choose this profile uh, that I, I already made. And that was very easy to achieve. It's a simple XML file. And that's it. I don't need to do much more than that. And now I'll rebuild the same project again. And as you can see, all these RCC tasks and uh, mock steps are now green and are also executed on partially on the remote cores uh, <coughs> that I have in my infrastructure. And we already achieved uh, a better build time by doing that. Uh, so uh, 
But we still see that some of the tasks, uh, many of them actually, are being executed on the local machine. Uh, this is because Intradable will try to employ the local machine as much as possible because it doesn't need to transfer files to it, everything is already there, and tasks that are being executed locally will, uh, in, in most cases, run faster than remotely. Uh, but sometimes I'd like to keep my machine available during the build time. We have customers, for example, that uh, without Incredibill, they build their QT builds uh, projects where it takes them something like an hour to build them. And with Incredibill, it takes them something like seven minutes or sometimes more than that. And even if you are building, it takes you just 10 minutes to build, you sometimes don't want your machine to be suffocated by running tasks and doing all this processing. So one of the options that we have is to instruct Incredibill to try and avoid the execution on my local machine as much as possible. There are tasks that Incredibill always will prefer to run locally, especially tasks that are related to I.O., such as links, uh, although this can also be uh, executed remotely as well if you, try, if, you, if you decide to do that. So avoid local, I just mark that checkbox and rebuild again. And as you can see here, these are my local cores and they are free. Uh, I can now use my machine. I won't feel any, any uh, kind of resource constraint uh, because my machine is actually uh, mostly idle and all the tasks are, most of the tasks are being executed remotely. Uh, we also see some kind of even performance boost over, uh, over the option to run uh, the task on my local machine as well because it also keeps my local machine free to do all this file synchronization that Incredible requires in order to uh, and manage the distributed uh, processing uh, flow. <clears throat> uh, you can specify any arguments you'd like by, uh, to, to your build commands using these fields. Uh, essentially, when you're running uh, your Qt creator builds with Incredibuild, Incredibuild will push uh, to your make execution uh, and a flag uh, for, for make and jump, for example, this is the minus J flag, which instructs the build tools uh, on how many tasks the build tool can run, uh, execute in parallel. Uh, by default, when you're running with Incredibill, Incredibill will instruct the build tool to run as much as 200 processes in parallel. The build system will run up to 200 tasks in parallel, depending on your dependencies. If you don't have enough, a lot of dependencies and you have a lot of tasks that can be executed in parallel, compilation tasks, Incredibly will run up to 200 of them in parallel across your farm. If you don't have enough resources, Incredibly will take all, hold over the queue of uh, uh, tasks to run and will run them according to the number of uh, cores that you actually have. If I want to increase that or uh, decrease the number of tasks that Incredibly uh, instructs the build system to spawn, I can specify a different value to minus j, for example, I can say I, ju I just want 24 up to 24 tasks being executed in parallel and uh, instruct Incredible to keep my original uh, job numbers and don't not, not replace it with 200. And then when I rebuild my code again with Incredible, uh, I'll see that Incredible restricts the number of tasks that are being executed in parallel to up to 24 uh, tasks. So this is also something you can do. Uh, as I said before, with Incredibuild, I'll be able to go here to the build history and see all the builds that I ran. I can navigate, I can slice and dice, I can uh, replay one of the builds. For example, if I want to see why this build took 30 seconds instead of 15, I can simply double click it and see uh, uh, all the build execution. I can replay, I can investigate, I can drill down and, and uh, uh, do all the things that uh, I'd like to do in order to examine and optimize and uh, correct my build execution. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see here in the list, we have quite a few uh, uh, interesting flags for Incredibuild uh, to uh, allow you to customize the way that Incredibuild executes your build plan. Uh, you can define the maximum CPUs uh, that Incredibuild will use for the build. Uh, you can do a lot of things related to how uh, build output is being generated, uh, how is the build title saved in your monitor, where to save the incredible monitor files, and a variety of additional flags that you can review. 
if you'd like to get more information uh, on what what every what each flag is responsible for, uh, it's very easy to do that. Uh, you'll just uh, uh, navigate to the Incredible for QT page, and you'd get a full overview on your ability and how to execute QT, how to configure it, what what's the purpose of each flag, etc. Uh, <clears throat> currently, I showed you how to build Qt and Qt Creator projects from uh, Windows, but essentially, Incredibly is cross-platform, and you can also do the same thing with Linux. So you can build from the command line with Linux, and what you can expect when doing that is a similar uh, build visualization that we just I just showed you in Windows. You can have something similar in Linux, so that represent here, as you can see, it's a, the Linux is a browser-based uh, uh, visualization. And as you can see here, that's again the Qt SDK build. Uh, again, every line represents a core, every bar represents a task. Uh, and as you can see, many tasks are being executed in parallel. Again, you can see all the task commands. You can uh, get some reports out of your build execution. What's the average time? How many cores did you use? And a lot of additional data uh, on your build execution, which makes it very easy to debug to QA and to uh, optimize your build execution performance. <clears throat> but uh, Incredibuild, as I said before at the beginning of my uh, uh, presentation, Incredibuild is, is a generic infrastructure. So uh, we have a solution for a variety of IDEs, but Incredibly is not a specific solution for this uh, IDE or another. It's a generic infrastructure that allows you to uh, do many different kinds of uh, process uh, acceleration, execution acceleration. Uh, and fortunately for us, uh, in the DevOps uh, development environment, there are a lot of processes that require uh, CPU power. It can be compilations, and these are things that our customers accelerate with Incredibly. So it can be compilations dynamic code analysis, code generation, a variety of test infrastructure tools, uh, in the release, packaging, code, code analysis, static code analysis, assets, uh, variety of assets that you can create, encoding, compression, data conversion, essentially anything that's multi-process and can run in parallel and has a high throughput is a great candidate for you to accelerate with Incredibly. So once you deploy Incredibly to accelerate your Qt Qt builds, uh, you can use the same infrastructure to accelerate a variety of other uh, uh, time-consuming tasks that you have as part of your dev execution or release automation. Uh, so usually when you're running uh, builds in Qt, uh, from my experience with our customer, that's not the end of it. So uh, some of our customers are then using Google tests, some are using Catch, uh, uh, VS test, MS test, and a variety of additional test infrastructure tools. And once they were able to achieve a very, very good performance with Incredible for their compilation, especially in the CI and Jenkins, for example, uh, they now see that the test takes time. So they use the same Incredible infrastructure they're using to accelerate their QT compilations to also accelerate their QT unit test or their general uh, test or code analysis and then they are able to achieve a much faster uh, DevOps cycle, continuous integration cycle, <coughs> and become more agile and allow the developers to get much faster response, both from their development environments and from uh, the continuous integration tools that uh, are uh, servicing them. Incredible also allow you to scale to the cloud. So if you are programming from home, if you are an indie developer or a small company, or even if you are a big company, but you uh, need to do more and you have a stressful release and you need to test more and build more, <coughs> Incredible can easily allow you to scale to any of the common public cloud vendors. We have many customers working uh, either on Amazon, Google Cloud, Azure, and a variety of additional uh, public clouds or in their uh, private stack, <coughs> private cloud infrastructure. For example, Gears of Wars and Microsoft Game Studio, uh, uh, the coalition, sorry, Microsoft Game Studio, who's developing Gears of War, one of the most popular games, 
is using IncrediBuild to accelerate both their continuous integration, uh, the development, uh, the IDEs the developers are using, and graphic designers. <coughs> Uh, last year, they needed to release two games in one year, which uh, made them uh, employ uh, 700 additional cores <coughs> in Azure in order to get more resources for their uh, compute intense compilation design, uh, graphic design, and others. <coughs> they were also able to allow uh, partners they worked with <coughs> uh, to get a full environment, working environment in Azure with hundreds of cores instead of only the local resources they had, they had in their companies. So they were able to allow their partners to work faster to develop their games much faster. And, it, and, and they achieved this goal to release two games in one year, which was a great fit. <coughs> so it's quite obvious uh, the benefits that you get once you reduce your build time from something like one hour to 15 minutes. It's drastic, shorter compilation times, better productivity, uh, developers can maintain context and not wait for an hour until they find out that they have some kind of issue that they need to address. And of course, you save a lot of money. And when you're, it's easy to, to understand the return of investment of incredible because it, it translates directly to time saving. But we found out when speaking with our customers that there are other benefits to use and to uh, accelerate your build executions. So once employing IncrediBuild and when a full rebuild is, is a fraction of the time it took before, it encouraged the dev and teams to work with branches more. Because when you're working with a branch, and we, you need to create a new branch or you want to switch to a different branch, you usually need to recompile the entire code, which is uh, something that uh, developers are reluctant to do. And that actually caused them to work less in branches, which uh, kind of made the release cycle more dirty. With IncrediBuild, we found out that uh, developers now can work with branches seamlessly because their build time is much faster. And that uh, actually improved the way that the development the dev teams are working. <coughs> Our customers uh, drastically build more often once they employ IncrediBuild. So uh, usually when your build take one hour, you'll build twice a day, once before lunch, and the second time will be before you go uh, back home. Uh, with IncrediBuild, when you reduce a one hour build to something like 10 minutes, you can build as much as you want. You can debug much faster and you can fail faster, which is very important as well. Uh, <clears throat> we see a lot of customers are doing, uh, uh, once they were able to accelerate, uh, for example, tests in the continuous integration, and we have customers accelerating tests from 45 minutes to one and a half minutes, uh, just by employing hundreds of cores instead of only the local cores. But once you do that and your tests can run much faster, these tests will not run faster only on the continuous integration machine that have, for example, a 48 core machine, but on any developer machine as well, because any developer, as long as the, along with the build server, will be able to use hundreds of cores to run the test. So they are able to do one of the uh, recent trends in development is called chief cleft methodology, which means that if things can run before doing the commit, for example, unit test, the developer can run them as well. So with IncrediBuild, as every developer can get hundreds of cores, you can shift left the unit test and to make the developer run the unit test before they commit the code. And then they can find uh, errors in their code uh, even before running that as part of the continuous integration cycle, which means that uh, from our customers and what we found out is uh, that they have less failures in their build iterations and especially in the nightly builds because they can build more uh, on the developer side before they commit their code. Uh, just <coughs> one last point on that. Uh, when the code fail or a test fail when being executed in the developer machine, uh, fixing that costs much, much less than uh, fixing a, 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 an error that occurs in the CI. Because when an error occurs in the CI, usually the release manager needs to look at it first 
and see if there is a problem in the environment and then open a ticket and get it back to R&D and then someone needs to inspect it again, et cetera, et cetera. And when the error is on the R&D, on the developer workstation, uh, the ability to address it even before the commit is much faster and reduces a lot of work for uh, different people in the organization. <laughs> I see that we have uh, uh, some addition, some more time, so I I want to go into additional uh, 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 slides that I wanted to share with you uh, once we have uh, more time. So what I wanted to show is first that Incredible has a variety of interfaces for you to be able to integrate it with other tools. Uh, you can go into. I'm not going to delve into that. What I've shown you with the XML is that. Uh, uh, you can uh, easily define process names that you'd like incredibly to uh, distribute and accelerate. Uh, we have also a, an interface in which you can simply spawn batch files and instruct incredibly to execute these specific steps in parallel and across uh, machines in the network. For example, if that's my original script file and I want to execute a few tasks uh, and I want incredibly to run that, the only thing I need to do is add actually submit slash command for each task and then wrap my original uh, command uh, script file.bat with an incredible command line and that's it. Incredible will take all these tasks and distribute them uh, to uh, additional machines in the network. <clears throat> uh, this is the other integration, the profile that I showed you, in which the only thing you need to do is just instruct Incredible which process names that are part of my executions uh, I'd like Incredible to run remotely, and again, run my original project with uh, Incredible. Uh, we have a lot of different options for these interfaces. You can define groups, you can uh, use conditionals in order to understand which task you want Incredible to run remotely or not and a variety of other options, and you can find all of these in our documentation. Another interface is a full-blown XML interface that uh, uh, is a, actually a scripting language that allows you to write a full-blown script of Incredibly instructing in how to uh, run your tasks, uh, in which context, uh, parallelization, et cetera. And that's uh, uh, some kind of scripting language that you can use, uh, and you can read about it in our user manual. Uh, before I continue, there are two, two questions uh, I'd like to address. One question was, uh, what is the expected uh, performance boost, uh, I, I guess, from Incredibuild? Uh, so the answer is it, that it varies. So uh, the Incredibuild is not limited in terms of uh, distributing processes. Uh, we can, Incredibuild can distribute processes to thousands of cores. Uh, the, the, the amount of performance you'll gain is actually by the amount is, is dependent on the amount of parallelization uh, you can uh, spawn your execution. So <clears throat> the minus J instruct make, for example, to run uh, uh, many jobs in parallel. But make will respect your dependencies in your make script. So if you have a lot of dependencies, this, this means that some of the tasks can't run in parallel to other tasks. So Incredibuild uh, depends on that because we don't intervene. We are not a build system. Incredibuild is not a build system. It actually uh, uh, accelerates other build systems. So if Make is able to spawn 1,000 tasks in parallel, Incredibuild can essentially execute all these tasks in parallel across cores in your network. But if Make is limited by your dependencies and can only run 20 tasks in parallel and not more than that, Incredible will only be able to distribute these 20 tasks and not more than that because we don't intervene with your build flow. We simply uh, allow you to have it more parallel and distribute it across cores. But in general, uh, from our experience, uh, uh, a regular customer who have a large C++ project can expect anything between uh, four times faster execution to something like 20 times faster execution. Uh, for the Qt SDK in Linux, we see something like six times faster execution, and in Windows, as I showed you before, something like 10 times faster execution. Uh, so it really varies. But uh, essentially, <clears throat> once you start working with Incredibuild, with Incredibuild's uh, visualization, it's very easy for you to uh, understand 
which, uh, where are the bottlenecks? Where are the dependencies that you can uh, eliminate in order to get a much better parallelization and be able to use IncrediBuild in a more productive way? Another question that I have here is whether IncrediBuild is compatible with Jenkins. So uh, the, the question is uh, absolutely. Uh, IncrediBuild has uh, uh, more than 2,500 organizations working with the product to accelerate a variety of uh, executions, both compilations and others. Uh, even things not related to builds at all, for example, simulation, financial derivatives, uh, rendering and others, essentially any kind of multi-process execution. And, uh, and our customers are using IncrediBuild with any kind of build uh, a continuous integration tool that supports the ability to run uh, command lines. Uh, so most of our customers are using Jenkins from the servers we are running, but we have many customers working with TeamCity, TFS, BitBuilder, and a variety of additional uh, 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 continuous integration tools. Uh, working in Jenkins, uh, the only thing you need to do is to simply replace your original uh, make command if you're running make in Jenkins, with incredible slash command and then pass your original make uh, command line. And that's actually all, the, all of the integration you need to do in order to run incredible from within a continuous integration tool. Uh, we, incredible also has a, a dedicated plugin for uh, Jenkins, uh, for TFS, and a plugin for TeamCity is, is coming up soon uh, that allows you to have a simplified way to work with incredible inside uh, this uh, continuous integration tool. But essentially, any kind of command line uh, powered uh, uh, step can be uh, accelerated with IncrediBuild as well. So you don't specifically need a plugin to do that. Uh, another thing that I'd like to do since we have uh, a few more minutes is to, as, as most of you are probably developers, I think it's, uh, it's very uh, interesting to go uh, uh, on the technology aspect of IncrediBuild and to understand how, how the magic of IncrediBuild works. How can IncrediBuild take a process uh, from my machine and run it on a different machine without me needing to install anything on this remote machine besides an IncrediBuild agent? How, how does it work? So here, I'm, uh, let's take an example, uh, a Visual Studio, uh, but essentially that could be Qt Creator as well, running uh, Qt Creator compilations. Uh, so when we are working, so I'll refer to it as Qt Creator. Uh, uh, so when we are running in Q, a Qt Creator build with IncrediBuild, essentially what we're doing is uh, we inject IncrediBuild code uh, into the Qt Creator execution process. And the IncrediBuild uh, injected code intercepts all the commands that is being executed by Qt Creator before they reach the uh, operating system. So when Qt Creator will try to execute a compilation task, IncrediBuild will intercept the task, the create process in window, the create process command, before this process uh, reaches the operating system. <clears throat> what IncrediBuild will do now is it will take a look at the default profile or the extended profile that you provided, as I said before, that instructs IncrediBuild which processes uh, you'd like IncrediBuild to distribute. IncrediBuild will find out that this uh, uh, compile uh, task is something you'd like to distribute to another machine. So IncrediBuild will not allow the create process command to reach the operating system. Instead, IncrediBuild will, the IncrediBuild agent installed on your machine will communicate with the IncrediBuild coordinator, which is a controller that the, its only job is to uh, uh, manage the entire infrastructure. It's a kind of listing. Uh, scheduler, it will find an available machine with idle CPU cycles and will connect this helper machine, uh, remote machine, with your initiated machine by creating a TCP channel communication between the IncrediBuild agent installed on, the, on your machine and the IncrediBuild agent installed on the remote machine. Henceforward, the coordinator is not part of this execution anymore. The IncrediBuild agent on my local machine, on your machine, will then communicate with the IncrediBuild agent on the remote machine and will ask it to execute the compiler process on the remote machine. IncrediBuild will again inject the virtualization code to the compiler process. 
it will intercept all the API calls that the process is doing with the operating system. So for example, and it actually will not allow these calls to, uh, to reach the operating system uh, without verifying that there is nothing that Incredibly wants to do as part of this call execution. So when you're, the compiler will try to open a file, whether it's a source file or a DLL, Incredible uh, will catch this open file call before it reaches the operating system. And in this case, uh, it was a request to uh, open a file.cpp in a specific folder. Uh, of course, this path and this file do not exist on this remote machine. And this, for example, this remote machine can be a machine from someone from marketing, the marketing uh, team, uh, who doesn't have any kind of build system and don't have this path. Uh, in order to, what Incredible will do, it will intercept the call before it reaches the operating system. And then we go back to the uh, Incredible agent on your local machine and ask for this file. Everything is transparent. You don't know about it, but that's how things are working in the background. The Incredible agent on the local machine will take this file and will transfer it to a special cache on the remote machine. Because uh, the file that the uh, uh, compiler wanted to open is a file uh, on, on you know, in a path that it does not exist on the remote machine. And we actually don't want to create it because that's a machine that someone is working on and we, want, we don't want him even to know that Incredible is using his idle resources, idle CPU cycles uh, to accelerate things that are working in the network. So Incredible will cache this file in a special place and will in fact redirect the Windows API call if we're speaking about Windows in order to open, instead of opening the file on the original location, to open the file in the cache location that Incredibly placed it. This call will then reach the operating system. The operating system will look whether the file is there, and it is because we copied it there on demand, and it will open the file and return a handle to Incredible, the, the injection layer of Incredible, and Incredible will get, take this handle and will transfer it back to the compiler. So now the compiler has a handle to the file or file descriptor, uh, and it can work with the file. It doesn't matter for the compiler that the file is in a different path than the original path the compiler wanted to uh, work with because it has now a handle and it doesn't care where the, where the file resides. And, uh, and that's it. So the next time a different process will try to open this file, if this file is already in the cache on the remote machine, and didn't change, Incredibly will not need to uh, bring it again from the local machine to the remote machine, <coughs> which uh, drastically minimized the network traffic. If the file did change, Incredibly will bring a new copy of this file to the remote machine. Same thing goes for any kind of uh, file system or in Windows registry operations. So if we're speaking about opening a file, creating a directory, creating a file, uh, all the files to create will be written back to the local machine in the original place. All the STD out, STD error, STD output, all of this will be streamlined back to the initiated machine. From your perspective as a user, it's really as though you have hundreds of cores on your initiating machine instead of the helper machine, uh, instead of only the local cores that you have. And once you have many machines in your network or you scale to the public cloud, you actually have not any more limited to the local machine and every machine in your infrastructure that has Incredibly on it can become a virtual supercomputer that can boost your performance and productivity. Thank you all uh, for joining this session. I hope that uh, you find it valuable. Uh, feel free to reach us for any additional questions or if you'd like us to uh, 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 we can offer uh, temporary licenses of Incredibly if you'd, try, if you'd like to evaluate it. Uh, so you can contact us at uh, sales at incredibly.com uh, and uh, you'll be redirected to the appropriate person in the company. Thank you all and uh, happy building. Goodbye. Thank you, Dory. Um, I think this is about the time we have for today. Um, just a reminder, if you have any more questions we didn't go through, you can either email uh, Dory directly or send us an email at info at cute.io and we'll answer them for you. Until then, I wish you a great day and goodbye.